Hello and welcome to Dingo's 8 Lamp Podcast. I'm Paul. I'm Dave. And I'm Justin. This week we're talking about the episode The Dark Age. This episode originally aired November 10th, 1997 to a viewing public of 5.6 million people. In this episode, a man is hurriedly making his way through the school grounds trying to find Giles when he is approached by a decomposing woman, Deatry. Meanwhile, Buffy's cor- listening to some loud music. No, no, no. The corpse strangles him before falling to the ground and dissolving. Well, there is that, but yeah, still. Giles tells Buffy to meet him at the hospital where there will be a blood delivery, which attracts vampires. When Giles gets back to the library, a detective is waiting for him, who informs Giles that there is a homicide on the campus, and the dead man had Giles' address on him, but no other forms of identification. Giles identifies the body as an old friend from London, Henry Philip. The body has a tattoo, which Giles claims he does not recognize, and this tattoo could in no way be 20 years old because it is far too fucking fresh. Uh, yeah. Shaken, Giles does not meet Buffy at the hospital, and she battles a doctor-dressed vampires until Angel shows up to help her. She comes to check on Giles, who looks disheveled and appears to have been drinking. He calls another friend in London and finds out that she is dead, too. As he rolls up his sleeves, he seal- he- we see the same t- tattoo as Philip. Meanwhile, Philip comes back to life in the morgue, his eyes flashing and escapes. On Saturday, Cordelia finally tells Buffy about the homicide detective's visit. At the library, Buffy finds Giles' former friend, Ethan, the costume shop owner who had caused cal- chaos on Halloween. As she calls Giles, Ethan mentions the mark of... Oh, fuck, how did you pronounce this again? Igon. Igon, thank you. Giles says that she is in danger, and the dead Philip enters. A panicked Giles shows up, and after a scuffle, which leaves Jenny unconscious, Philip dissolves. When Jenny comes to, she seems normal, but her eyes flash. Willow discovers the mark of Igon in a book. The demon Igon has the ability to possess the body of a dead or unconscious host. They figure out that the demon has jumped from Philip's body to Jenny's. Possessed, Jenny tries tries to seduce Giles at his apartment. When Buffy comes to the rescue, Jenny jumps out the window. Giles explains to Buffy that he ran with a bad crowd when he was young, and they used the demon Igon as a temporary high, directing him in and out of each other's bodies. But one friend died, then Deidre, and now it appears the rest of the group is being killed. Buffy goes to the deserted costume shop, trying to defend Ethan against Igon slash Jenny. Ethan knocks her out and ties her up to put and par- puts a mark of Igon on her neck. He then uses acid to remove his own tattoo so that Igon will take Buffy instead of him. Jenny enters completely demonic and Buffy breaks free. Angel arrives and chokes Joni, Joni, Jenny until she loses consciousness. Whereupon Igon moves to the nearest dead body, that of Angel. The two demons, the vampire within and Igon, fight for control of Angel's body, and Igon is destroyed. Jenny returns to normal. But Ethan escapes. So, what did you think of this episode? Interesting concept for a monster that came up. Oh man, that demon fight. Just the case that Willow came up with that idea. Oh, Willow was a strong character this episode. It was amazing. Like when uh, Xander and Cordelia were about to start uh, a fight and Willow was like, No, you two stop doing this. We need to help our friend. <laughs> Yeah, Will is pretty great in this episode. Yeah, mm-hmm. she was great. And then she came up with the idea as well, so... Yeah. This is also one of the only Giles-centric episodes we've had. Yeah, Indeed. so true. Even more so than that, they actually brought a character back after he was supposedly going to come back. Yes, Ethan has come back now. Um, he will come back again. Well, oh, yeah, man. he's not dead, so... And Ethan's just so much fun... Oh, yeah, yeah that's true really. with his bad He's He's a good character. He'll need another good punch to the face or something next time. <laughs> well, we'll have to find out what he gets. Mm. So, uh, what did you think of this episode like as an overall kind of score? Overall with this one, it wasn't much, but with what it did, it was actually fairly interesting, especially kind of focusing a bit more on Giles from the couple of previous episodes kind of hinting that more stuff kind of happened with him in the past. Yeah, basically got a little bit of a Giles' backstory as well, like what he did when he was in London, 
And uh, basically, he studied a bit of the occult as well, which led to this Igon thing. Yes. And also, in the first season, they somehow managed to tell us that Giles had never cast a spell before. Which we conclusively in this episode prove is bullshit. Yeah. That yeah, is pretty true. much bullshit now, yeah. Because <laughs> he at the very least summoned one demon. Well, Multiple times. Well, Maybe he was just lying at the time. <laughs> it's like, I've never done this before. <laughs> so let's see. Now that two or so spells that he's supposedly done. It's Summoning like, a demon and taking care of that witchy business It's not like he wants season. his uh, past to be all that known that he's done that sort of thing before. Yeah, I, I mean, know. that's that's a legitimate kind of way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah, that's how I want to look at it. I mean, not just bad... Not I'm not trying to look at it as bad writing. I'm trying to make sense of it as it is. Nah. I love how like Giles is sitting in the library and Buffy's doing like calisthenics. And Joss has a great line where he's like, wonderful, you work on your muscle tone while my brains dribble out my ears. <laughs> yeah, Giles isn't exactly a fan of that kind of music. Yeah, it's this weird, like, techno dance mix. Pretty much anything to aerobicize. It's like mid-90s aerobics uh, yeah. music. Uh, we see Giles having a nightmare, which is, like, really cool. We get all these flashes of this demon face and different people and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when Willow and Buffy are playing anywhere else, they mention somebody named Gavin Rossdale. Now, do either of you know who this is? I do not. Nothing's coming to mind. Okay, so he was the lead singer for a band called Bush and another band called Institute, and he also had a solo career. Hmm. Uh, so he would have been uh, oh. the lead singer for Bush at this time because Institute didn't come out until like, the early 2000s. Oh, okay. Uh, just a little a little thing there. Also, the he only released one album with the band Institute, and it's pretty damn good. It's a positive, yes. That, was, I guess, was during the scene of Buffy and Willow out in the courtyard sort yes. of having dream yes. thoughts sort of things? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because Buffy mentions like being on a beach and then uh, Gavin Rossdale giving her a foot massage. Yeah, uh-huh. that's that scene. Duly noted. Uh, and then I think it's Willie who has uh, a line that says Giles' diapers were tweed. Which what? I think it's I think it's Willie who says this, where they're all like, "Oh, Giles is so straight laced and all of this." And I think it's is Will or Xander who has the line that yeah, his, even his diapers were tweed. I was. I'm thinking probably Xander would have said that. I would be surprised if Willow did. Willow gets some pretty good lines in this episode. Like, at one point, um, later on in the same conversation, she's like, Giles is the kind of guy who would look at math class and go, this could be mathier. Giles gets a great line where he's like, should I answer that or just glare? (laughs) Oh, Cordelia, this episode, um... Walking in on Giles um, during uh, detectives and whatnot coming to see him. Well, yeah. Can't you take a hint, Cordelia? Right. Um, about that uh, speeding ticket. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's bug. Uh, I love how um, so Giles and Jenny are walking through the uh, courtyard and he lent her a book and she's like, oh yeah, you know, I have to dog your all your favorite parrot. Your, oh. your favorite pages. And then I just had to start underlining uh, stuff I really wanted to talk oh about. Oh, no! And Giles is just like, he's slowly having a panic attack. And she's like, I'm, li- I'm lying, Rupert. The book's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then basically invites him to her place or for Saturday, which yeah. didn't really happen per se. I Not love the way that he would want it. I love uh, exactly what you're building on, Justin, where it's like, Cordelia's like, I was. It was a one-way street, and I was going one way. <laughs> True. Was it the wrong way? The right way? <laughs> Technically correct. Strikes again. <laughs> uh, we find out that the dead man is named Philip Henry, and he has a tattoo, and was a friend of Giles from London. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we go to the hospital where there's a blood delivery being made. Uh, and Buffy says, since when do you doctors take deliveries? And I'm like, well, why is the hospital only getting one cooler of blood for a week in Sunnydale? Yeah. They probably go through that in an hour. 
the, also that little bit of a look comment with Angel um, after everything was said and done. You're good for taking this into the hospital, right? Of course. Of course it'll go to the hospital. Uh, fine. <laughs> but the thing is, Angel technically is a vegetarian. He will not drink human blood. Hmm. Hmm. He only drinks um, pig blood. Ah. Uh, and like cow blood and stuff. Nah, that's not technically being a vegetarian. It's just... Well, it is for a vampire. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Although I don't think they've established that in the series yet. No, they've shown that he has a supply that he can use and he doesn't exactly go hunting, but what it is specifically hasn't been verbally said. Yeah, because uh, if you watch Angel, you'll see scenes where he goes to a butcher to get his blood. No. Uh, so yes, the fight scene at the blood delivery is better than anything that we saw in season one. Yeah, decently enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I love the one. Giles, the man who counts tardiness as the eighth deadly sin... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, and another of Giles' friends ends up dead, and we see that tattoo again, and it is far too fucking fresh to be 20 years old. It should be far more faded than it is. Yeah, they needed to put something on the skin, and the most likely they may Make have it look some... a little bit more aged than. You yeah, know... it should be more faded. Mm. Shouldn't it look glossy Cause, at all. Because that, that shit looks like it was put on a day ago. Yeah. Or well, right no, maybe that like scene. A, no, probably a week ago because it's not like red or anything. Because mm. if you get oh, a yeah, tattoo, right, it's right. all like red and and stuff for a couple of days. No, mm. just like how it was on the back of uh, yeah, Buffy exactly. When... Uh, we get which I believe is the first reference to Xander's uncle Rory. Ah, uh, yes. We will eventually meet Uncle Rory. Oh dear. But we will get many stories about the man before then. Videos. Uh, build up. Yes, we will meet Uncle Rory at Xander's wedding. Okay. That okay. Works. I'm that's not going to tell you who Xander's going to marry. That's a spoiler. He's going to get married. Yes, Xander will get married. That is not exactly... Well, the spoiler is more who he gets married to. Okay. There's one particular thing in mind, but I think that's a little bit further down the road. Oh, it's it's not until like season so six. So he basically hit on a praying mantis, uh, basically an ancient... Well, let's just say, um, if you follow that line, you can probably figure out who he's going to end up getting engaged to. And if I remember things right, I think I have a good idea where that point ends. Let's just say, Justin, it's not a human. Well, well of course not. Well, technically... Uh, well, technically, is a human at the, that that point, but wasn't when Xander met her. Uh, anyway, continuing on, we find out that Ethan hmm. is uh, involved in this, and I just love every time Ethan's in an episode because it's so good. Really, you didn't take my advice and leave. Well, I still had the I still had a payment on the building. <laughs> it's like I still had three weeks left on the rent or whatever. Uh, Cordelia and Xander get paired up again. I wonder if that'll lead to anything. Yeah, <clears throat> probably not. Aside from Xander being like, really? Cordelia? Again? Uh, oh yeah, so I have a note that says, God damn it, Buffy, did you take stupid pills? She immediately walks in front of Ethan. Ethan is like the definition of scoundrel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. that moment of her walking ahead, him grabbing the bar and just, yeah, fuck! <laughs> I'm like, what did you think was going to happen? Huh. Uh, Willow then gets yelly at uh, Cordelia and Xander. <laughs> and it's pretty great anytime Willow gets mad. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, the demon then jumps from Jenny into Angel, and Angel's vampire demon has a fight, and it's... What did you think of this as a solution to the problem? I was kind of like, oh my gosh, that actually worked. Why the hell did I not sort of think of that? With that sort of thing. Since it was a bit of a surprise to me. It's like, oh right, Angel's a vampire. And just the little thought in my head just be like, went random white skate giving an idea of someone's consciousness. And just the demon coming in, it's like, awesome, dead body. Wait, this doesn't seem like the end, a dead like a dead body. Looks like someone lives here. Angelus sort of coming up in the corner, it's like, oh hey. You up for a brawl? And then just them beat the living snot out of each other while Angel's being flung around the room. I love the 
random effects that they tried to make with this. <laughs> yes, well, they are restricted by a low budget and it being 1997. It just yeah, must... I mean, it looked better than season one's effects, but I mean, yeah. it was interesting effects for sure. It must have been a pain in the butt, though, having to switch him into two different makeups sort of things for his face to get all the particular scenes they needed. Well, they would have done, like, put the makeup on, do one set of shots, put the other makeup on, do the other set, and then just edit it together. True, but still but, having to do both. Yeah, yeah, no. Anytime they... There's a reason that whenever they put vampire makeup on Angel, they want to get their money's worth. Mm. They don't put it on for 30 seconds. Yeah. Because no. that shit's expensive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ethan ends up getting away... Because he's, he's a little scoundrel and he'll be back. Alright, so for epi- for music in this episode, there's none. Other than just like original score. That's fine. Mm-hmm. For international titles, however. Oh boy. We'll start off with Finnish. Which is The Powers of Darkness. Yeah. Uh, sure. French, The Hidden Face. Okay. I suppose that works within the context of things, but... And German... The Mark of Igon. That's a bit on the dot. That works. Actually, that's a very fitting title. It is. It is. So overall, what did you guys think of this episode? What kind of score would you give it? I'd say it was good for most everything. Not exactly great in comparison to what we saw last week, so I'd probably say maybe seven and a half. Okay. Justin? I rather enjoyed this episode. Um... Overall, I'd give it, like, an 8, though. It's it's fairly decent, at least. Alrighty, so next week, we're going to be doing a two-part episode. And I was wrong, this one wasn't written by Joss Whedon. <gasps> the gasp. Uh, it's written by somebody else who's a producer on the show. Nice. Uh, anyway, uh, the episode is What's My Line? Parts 1 and 2. In these episodes, Spike brings in three professional bounty hunters to eliminate Buffy. While she ponders what her profession might be if her fate was not already sealed, Buffy meets another slayer, Kendra Young, much to Buffy's dismay. Ooh. Because technically Buffy died at the end of season one, which means that another slayer would be called. Hmm. She was unconscious, but I guess you can call that dead. She was technically dead because she wasn't breathing. Dead, the drowning and whatnot. She was medically dead. Yes. Yes. So we are going to meet meet the new Slayer in town. Sort of. Kendra. Uh, it's going to be an interesting time. Oh boy. What exactly does the prophecy say about two Slayers showing up? Well... Does she also go to high school? Let's just say Kendra isn't from the States. Oh. Uh, Canada? No. Aww. But later this season we will get a two-parter from Joss... Uh, I believe he writes a second part of it. Let me just yes. So we will get the episodes Surprise and Innocence, which are quite possibly the best two parter in the series run. Okay. So we can look forward to that in the next couple of weeks. Okay, do Okay. So on that note, do either of you have anything to add? Nah, I think we're good. Yeah, I think that's all. Alrighty, in that case, I'm Paul. I'm Dave. And I'm Justin.